The Caribbean community, CARICOM, home of nearly 16 million, 60% of whom are under the age of 30, sits in a wider regional block of over 44 million people. Take a flight down Guam, like you are ready. High among the priorities for CARICOM governments and policymakers is the health and wellness of its citizens. A regional imperative which directly intersects with the mission of the Caribbean Institute for Health Research. In 2019, CARE at 20 is taking stock of what has been achieved so far and the new frontiers to conquer in its continuing mission to address the regional and global challenges related to nutrition and non-communicable diseases. The Caribbean Institute for Health Research was formed with the purpose of expanding the amount of research, the research output in health at the University of the West Indies and also to provide training of the next generation of researchers to make sure we have the people to continue to expand and conduct the research that the region needs. Evidence through rigorous research is embedded in CARES DNA the historical strands of which date back to the 1950s as the pioneering Tropical Metabolism Research Unit founded by the Medical Research Council of the United Kingdom to later evolve into the expanded Tropical Medicine Research Institute in 1999 under the auspices of the University of the West Indies. In 1945, the British government sent John Waterloo who became the first director of the TMRU when it was formed, to report on, to examine and report on the causes of why so many children were dying. In 1954, he asked the MRC whether or not they would set up a unit specifically to look at severe acute malnutrition, its underlying causes, and to use the results from such experiments and, and clinical examinations into improved treatment. From the former TMRU Malnutrition Children's Ward, CARE can look back with pride at its groundbreaking research in child development and nutrition, a key contributing factor in the eradication of severe childhood malnutrition in Jamaica. It's 27 minutes before 11 o'clock here at the Caribbean Institute for Health Research at the University of the West Indies. Good morning, Professor Walker. Good morning. Good morning, Professor Reed. Good morning, sir. The award represents a really good news story for the country in that the reason we've closed it is because severe childhood malnutrition has become exceedingly rare in Jamaica. If you look at malnutrition, whilst we may be celebrating here, yeah. you were to go to Haiti, you were yes. to go to places in Africa, um, malnutrition is still rampant and the international directive, so to speak, as adopted by the World Health Organization has been formulated and, and um, basically incorporated the, the findings that we have here into the World Health Organization documents which is what is used internationally to treat individuals with these problems. What the unit did following that was key because they moved to outreach to ensuring that what we knew here was also going to be implemented in hospitals throughout Jamaica. Yeah. Regarded as a jewel in the research crown of the University of the West Indies, CARE is a focal point for global collaborations in health research and is world-renowned for its work in sickle cell research. The Institute has intentionally collaborated with the Ministry of Health and Wellness to improve care for affected persons. Sickle cell disease is now on the National Health Fund subsidy program. The newborn screening program including early childhood care, is being further integrated into public health. Many healthcare workers have been trained to deliver better care across the island. And with the sickle cell clinical care guidelines, regional care is being impacted. Care has impacted my life professionally because I've learned so much. I have been involved in almost every area of this unit. So we watch our patients from birth all the way up and we are impacting their lives at every single stage of their lives and development. 
CARE has conducted groundbreaking research in child development, building on the pioneering work of Professor Sally McGregor, who supervised a talented cohort of then young, eager researchers such as Susan Walker, Christine Powell, Julie Meeks, Suzanne Chang Lopez. When we first started, um, I don't think they thought what we were doing was science. We were making toys from discarded material. We were recycling before recycling became an in thing. Um, so a lot of it didn't look like science at the time. Their pioneering studies showed that when parents of undernourished children were taught how to make simple toys from everyday household items and play with their children, this would lead to better school performance and even better paying jobs in adulthood. The group has taken the lessons learned from this study to evaluate how improving parenting skills can impact child development in other children, such as those who are smaller than expected at birth, as well as those who have sickle cell disease. The ERU's chronic disease group has also launched a new cohort study, the largest so far in Jamaica, to investigate genetic and environmental risk factors for non-communicable diseases. In Barbados, the Georgia Lane Chronic Disease Research Center, now headed by Professor Simon Anderson, who has succeeded Professor Alafia Samuels, is building on its strong track record in population-based epidemiological research, focusing on surveillance of chronic non-communicable disease incidents, prevalence, and risk factors. The Chronic Disease Group was founded by Professor Rainford Wilkes, and this unit has been collaborating with the Jamaica Ministry of Health to conduct national surveys since 2001. And this includes three Jamaica Health and Lifestyle surveys, which have all documented the rising burden of chronic non-communicable diseases, such as hypertension and diabetes, as well as their risk factors. I was just absolutely fascinated with the thought of what is be behind what we saw as clinicians. So why did this person get this disease? I was encouraged by several people, including the former Chancellor, Chancellor Emeritus Professor Lean, who insisted that I go the route of a subspecialty training before I go the route of the research training. And so I did internal medicine and I went into epidemiology. Epidemiology is a specialty had never had any indigenous roots. At the same time, the epidemiological transition was taking place and the chronic disease was becoming the most um, dominant in our public health spectrum and scenario. When we do our work, we should put it in the context of global health. We study it here, we see if institutions within the society like the churches, like the community organizations, if they can help, and then when we demonstrate those solutions, we globalize it. CARE is home to some of the region's finest research scholars and scientists, clinicians, healthcare professionals, and administrative and support staff. Young and upcoming researchers dream of a coveted position at CARE where they can be assured of an environment of research excellence and willing mentors to guide their success. For many years, I was the coordinator for the graduate programs in the Institute. Mm -hmm. Through this work, I've seen many persons trained in nutrition mm -hmm. and um, also helped with the epidemiology <laughs> training as well and I've seen them well placed both in Jamaica and the Caribbean all over the world. I was scared in the beginning because everything was going over my head. People are brilliant um, but what's bigger than the brilliance is we are so connected, the seniors are so supportive, they let you grow, they let you have your dreams, they will never hold you back. I came to CARE to study the Masters in Nutrition in 2003 and since then I have developed both as a person and as an academic. I've been mentored by some persons who are world-renowned researchers and I have enjoyed my time at CARE. The care that we receive at CARE, that's really tremendous and it has allowed me to grow into an assertive, mature young man. 
who actually have a sense of direction now. Currently, I'm part of the Ari Homes Toolbox. That's the research project I'm working on where I work with actual parents. It's been very rewarding work because I get to help people like you're literally helping people with the job that we do day to day. I use the work in the social sciences. I know I have a focus um, in pursuing um, a career path in public health to try and see how I can assist some of the persons who are affected by cancer. To transition from being a research assistant to a junior research fellow, for me it's one of the more pivotal points in my academic career. Much of my work has centered around energy metabolism, looking at diets, looking at body composition, and I've had the opportunity to work with several international and local scientists, some of the best. With much gratitude for the university, CARE and TMRU, I feel a sense of pride to be part of this celebration. I hope CARE will get the support to continue the good work in health and well-being. It's been a real blessing for me to be over at CARE where we do such cutting-edge research, we work with such innovative thinkers and clinicians in the field of health-related work. Care is, it really is one of the premier health research institutions or institutes globally, I feel, way beyond the, the realm of the region. And I'd like to see this institute grow, and by extension, I would like to grow with it. I enjoy working at TMRU. I love the atmosphere of intense science and collegiality and it gives me an, an opportunity to interface with some bright minds, some of the Caribbean's best minds. So when I think about care now at 20 and what I hope for the, the junior and new, the new researchers joining and students coming in is that they seize their opportunity, work with a passionate, um, empowering mentor, and build a research career around the things that bring them joy and that they're passionate about. The Caribbean Institute for Health Research, a specialized center of the University of the West Indies, mandated to deliver healthcare research and interventions of global relevance for a healthier Caribbean. Respected, resource-rich in knowledge, scientific and technical competence, CARE at 20 is a Caribbean-based center of excellence with a global outlook, pushing the boundaries of health research for a sustainable future for the peoples of the Caribbean for the next 20 years and beyond. I'd like to extend my my sincere congratulations to CARE for 20 years of outstanding contributions to science, particularly in the area of sickle cell research as well as large-scale epidemiological studies. I've had the pleasure of working with CARE, collaborating with CARE for the past two years in the area of cancer, focusing on cancer research, and this is in partnership with the AC3. It has been a truly productive experience and I look forward to many more years of collaboration. I truly believe that if we are going to prevail against cancer, we have to work together and only then can we impact the lives of real people. Again, congratulations. Hi, this is Barry Popkin, a professor at the University of North Carolina. We've had a three and a half year collaboration going on another six to eight with uh, Suzanne Suarez with, okay. from uh, CARE and we've been working, having a great relationship with you. We want to wish you a very happy anniversary and thank Suzanne and also Sherry Ann for all the amazing collaborative work they've done with us, cooperation. Thank you very much. Happy anniversary. Hi, this is John Shepard at the University of Hawaii Cancer Center wishing my friends at the Caribbean Institute for Health Research a very happy 20th anniversary. As you recall, I was early in my career when I started collaborating with the Institute. I don't know how, I didn't know much about uh, the great work that was going on in Jamaica, but you guys taught me so much about the challenges of malnutrition 
and the uniqueness of this condition in different parts of the world. I hope our work together continues for many years. Best wishes to all until we meet again.